uh, welcome back to Electro Anarchy. Uh, today I thought I would uh, continue uh, uh, working with the uh, the orange pie and um, thought of talking about some of this, the more advanced stuff uh, that I've been doing. Um, one uh, is I've been using multiple libraries uh, to get different things working on this. Uh, one that I found that's real good is the wiring OP library. Uh, it's on uh, GitHub um, this is the address. Uh, let me zoom in on there for you so you can read that address right there. Okay, so that's the address that you're going to need to go to, or you can just do a search for wiring OP. Uh, I would recommend getting the one off of GitHub and get the most advanced uh, or the most up to date one. Uh, and, and this was a this is a really good library um, to work with. Um, if you go down here to the bottom, uh, it gives you instructions on how to install it and use it. It works really, really well. Um, very simple, easy to use. Uh, now, we're going to be using some Python. So in order to use some Python, um, you need to install this library uh, right here. It's also on GitHub. Highlight that. There we go. And that is uh, this library right here on GitHub. Uh, it's going to be the basically the Orange Pi PC GPIO Pi H3 uh, library. And uh, I've used this with some Python stuff and it's worked really, really well. Um, there is some differences uh, and uh, I'll go over some of those as far as uh, the, the mapping of uh, ports and different things are different between all these libraries. Uh, but as far as the install, this one's really, really simple. Yeah, download it, and you just go into the folder and, and Python set up pi install. And once it's installed, we're ready to use it. Let's go over some of this. Um, what I have here is I have uh, taken the expansion board and I've hooked up I double relay okay now when you first hook these in uh, th this relay switches on uh, ground so you supply 5 volts ground and then your two input output pins now when you first hook this up of course your input output pins are standard at low on your GPIOs. So you have to set them to high to actually get the relays to go off. There are other ways of doing that as far as going through, uh, you know, you can go through transistors to switch off, you know, and do different things, but this is just a generalized, just a, this is just about getting the signals out. Um, I'm going to do some other stuff with some pulse width modulation uh, in another video. This is just basically to active, you know, as far as actuating this. This is going to be the working example. So um, if we're going to go do a normal C, um, our CPP program. So let's go over here. Um, set one up here. It's called Relay. And basically it is here. Um, what you're going to want to do. Let's get over here where you can see it good. Okay. You just want to include your standard wiring pi dot h library. Uh, define the pin like I've got one direction forward reverse uh, pin 23 and 22, uh, which is let's see, am I on the right one? Yep, I'm on the right one. Uh, the one above ground is 24, and it kind of goes up from there, um, like right. Pull it up here. You can see it. So. The pin right next to ground is 24, the next one is 23, and then that one's 22. So those are the two pins that we're going to use to operate this relay. Basically all this is, you do your wiring pi setup, pin mode, I put forward, output, reverses output, and then down here, just a simple little routine, switches it on, switches it off, goes the other one, switch it on, switch it off. So that's all it does, just switch them on and off. Um, and it's just digital right, forward, low, delay, on and on and on, return, it'll keep looping indefinitely. So, in order to make this function, I need to go over here, pull up a command, pull this up. I'm going to see I'm on the desktop, so see desktop. Relay. 
Okay. So before I hit this, zoom back out here so you can see. I'm going to let's get this right here. Hit this. And all it does, click along and off. ports <laughs> but all that does is just click them on and off that's all it does so that's just how to do the simple you know the C uh, doing it through uh, CPP okay so let me shut that down and let's talk about Python here um, Python is great but if you're going to use it I think, in my opinion, you should do some of the cooler things. In other words, why not set up a GUI to run off of this, to use this? And that's pretty much what I've got here, is I am setting up, let me pull that power so it's not clicking. So what I did was, I've set up a simple program here that has a little, nice little GUI, and uh, you can hit the button, make the relays go on and off. Uh, which is pretty cool. I adapted this from, I was digging around some stuff, playing around with some LED. First I did it as an LED, then I switched it to change it to running a relay or anything really. You can do a light switch, do whatever you want to. Um, but the first things you want to do is you want to import your OS so it, you know, you have access to all the libraries of your operating system and of course your system so you have access to the, uh, the kernel and everything. And then you're gonna input, you're gonna, you're gonna bring in the tkinter uh, library so you can make GUIs and then you're going to import the TK font. Uh, you don't want to use the wiring pi because we're going to be using Python. Okay, can you see all that? Let me see. You can wait a little bit here. Okay, so you don't want to import your wiring pi. There you go. Import OS, import sys, import tkinter, import your TK font. Uh, and don't worry about your wiring pi. Now, down here, uh, for your Python, um, your GPIO on your Python, you're going to pull specific libraries from this one large library. So you're going to pull uh, from your Py A20, which is going to be your, your Python library, uh, basically formatted just like this. You're going to import your GPIO, you're going to input your port, you're going to import connector. You also want to do your time, and you want to import sleep. Okay. That's important as far as getting it to shut down. Okay, we're going to set up the port. Um, we're going to these ports are labeled differently through this library. And if you look in the library, uh, let's go back over. You go into your right here. You go into this and you look in. I believe it's in the README, and it talks. Well, I wanted to bring that up. I don't want that. I don't want that either. I'm click happy today. Okay, here we go. Um, if you look at your layout, it, it talks down here about um, which pins, how to configure them, and stuff, and your your I2C your SPIs and all that different stuff. You kind of have to dig around in this library to find out exactly how they're labeled. Um, I made a little cheat sheet once I dug around and found out which ones were what and I made a little cheat sheet for using the specific ones that I want to. The other thing about this is you don't set high low on your pin configurations. In other words high equals one, low equals zero. If you're doing input, input zero, output one, pull up one, pull down two. So you, you use numbers to designate rather than, you know, low, high, input, output, those type of things. Rather than that, you use these numbers. Um, here are your GPIO 
methods, uh, what you're going to be putting in here, you know, initialize, get config, set config, input, output, pull up. So these are the, you know, instead of serial in or digital write or any of those type of things, you're going to be using these instead. A little bit different, uh, but honestly, I kind of, I kind of like doing it this way uh, in some ways. But in any case, I mapped out uh, the ports that I'm using, I believe, I'll have to double check that, um, uh, port PA10 and PA9. Okay, so those are the ports, you configure those here, and that's for your forward and reverse. Um, you're going to do your GPIO, let's see, right here, your GPIO initial, init, init, init the, the, getting tongue-tied today, let me go back a little bit, here we go, getting tongue-tied, anyway, you're going to initialize your GPIO, you're going to set your configuration, uh, forward's going to be a GPIO output, your reverse is going to be a GPI output. So we're going to use those as output. Uh, your window is going to be controlled by your TK, TKinter. You're going to set your font. Uh, this is what I, you know, just the basic stuff. You can change these to whatever you want to. Then we're going to set up our definitions. Uh, LED on is, you know, it's going to print this in the terminal and then it's going to output these. Basically what we're doing is we're going to have the forward that's going to go, um, let's see how it is. Uh, one's going to go off, the other one's going to go on, uh, and you're going to reverse that whenever you, when you reverse it, you're going to swap those so that one's off, one's on. Uh, and then when you go to exit, it's going to set both of them off, and then it's going to quit your window so that when you hit exit, it's going to shut everything down, it's going to close the window, and you're going to be done. Okay, down here we're going to set up our window uh, for our GUI. Um, we're just going to call it our first, like I said, this was off an example, so I just kind of went with the normal stuff later on I'll build some, I plan on building some more intense stuff but this is just you know first GUI your window geometry 800 by 480 putting in an exit button here and let me show you all the code Oops. so you can see all of it here so if you want to follow along at home you can uh, basically uh, you make an exit button and this is how you're going to set up your exit button same thing with your LED on button and your LED off button. And then at the very end, you're going to do your main loop. And that's just going to continue. Okay, once that is done, you just simply save it. And then you go over to wherever you saved it from. And you're going to want to open up a terminal. Okay, so we open up a terminal and we will go over see to the desktop. Let's cd to the, what are these called, okay, the GUI file, okay, and this is what I've got so far, so let's do uh, sudo python uh, gui.py, okay, now we have a to use uh, really really large and everything but like I said just a simple just a simple program Uh, a word of advice that I found out if you have a program that's running in the background and it just continues and continues if you pull up your task manager you can look and see I've still got this right here relay is still running so all I have to do is go over here go kill and LX task. Okay. Go the other way around this. All right. See, it won't let me do it because I'm as a user, not as root. So what you have to do is you go to sudo LX task. Enter password. You can open up your task manager as root, and then relay 
kill. Yes. Done. Now it's off. So if you have any, you know, it's a program that didn't stop itself and it's just continuing to run in the background, just open up your task manager as root. Once you open it up as root, then you can kill that application and then you can continue on with other stuff. Okay, so we got that out of the way. 